Hi, welcome to KubeCon and CNCF. This session is pre-recorded and we are speaking to you from the past. Our presenters will be watching the chat and please feel free to ask any questions. We will talk about threat hunting at scale by using Kubernetes audit logs and kernel events. And in this journey, we are not going to deep dive into each technology that we utilize for our purpose, but it's more than that. We want to tell our user story to show the way how we did it and demonstrate how everything works in harmony at our production. Let's get started. I am Furkan Türkal and Trent Yol. I am maintaining production level glass chairs as a platform engineer. Also, I am contributing to various CNC projects and open source projects. Hello, my name is Emin. I have been working on containers and the technologies around containers for the last two years. I love working on open source projects and I love watching uh, car videos. Okay, <clears throat> before we get into it, uh, we want to introduce ourselves. Uh, Trendyol is uh, a tech company that deeply focus on e-commerce in Turkey and creates a positive impact on our country and the ecosystem. At Trendyol, we are running thousands of Kubernetes, Elasticsearch, NoSQL databases, and much more. We are highly motivated to include open source projects into our systems and be part of open source project community and projects. We are mostly managing our infrastructure on-prem that is distributed across seven different data centers running HA Kubernetes clusters. This is going to be our very first CNCF presentation as a trend goal. So as you see here, uh, this is our infrastructure metrics. You can monitor our, our metrics at real time by just entering infometrics.trendyol.com. And before we get into the presentation, we want to thank our platform team for their great work and send uh, special greetings to our squad for their awesome teamwork. Okay, who is this session for? If you are curious about runtime security and thread hunting at production and want to know how you can monitor entire system, this session is definitely for you. You will learn how we detect threats automate the process of collecting and analyzing our logs to monitor of potential security threats, then triage these threats with appropriate actions. Moreover, this session is investigating the suspicious audits in your infrastructure and create a baseline for monitoring and alerting. Best of all, we, it's all done with open source projects. Okay, into the... Uh, in this session, uh, we'll talk about the threats and our security pipeline. Related to that, we'll explain the audit logs, the runtime security, the log processing, and the monitoring. Besides, we will reproduce our mindset in a demo at the end of the session. Furthermore, we want to share some ideas for cluster security monitoring. <clears throat> okay, what is threat? COVID-19 is a threat to humans. Of course, everyone knows what threat is. Before we started, uh, we want to simplify our subject here with a well-known example. Nowadays, COVID-19 is losing its effect, hopefully, but we are still suffering from COVID-19. The sickness is simply, is simply uh, a threat to us. When you become ill, you'll start showing some symptoms like high fever or cough. So it's like basically the trade is coming from outside. It's not, and our body is monitoring itself and starts alerting for us to take action when you got ill. Uh, we are going to follow the same basic for our Kubernetes environments. Threats. We should focus on our defense to minimize the risk. We have to know what we are surrounded by. Like here, we have a bunch of examples which containers, reading credentials, accessing the file systems. So uh, there will be always actors to intimidate your environment and you have to be aware of the malicious application and user to protect your environment. So first of all, you need to define your trust boundaries here. Our trust boundaries basically are clusters, nodes, and of course containers. The main key point here is to create a focused defense area that we should create fine-tuned rules and alert mechanisms. 
especially if you work on a high scale, you need to label your logs to mark where the data is sourced. If uh, we are able to find repeatable patterns to detect threats by parsing logs, uh, we can easily optimize our hunting. Here, uh, our security pipeline, and uh, we call it our security, uh, security pipeline at runtime, basically. So we're going to uh, cover our threats hunting topic in four different headlines. Each, uh, each in the each headline, we'll uh, introduce a open source projects and we'll show our configuration and end of the session. Like we said, we'll uh, use those application in in a demo. If you're not so familiar with these technologies, don't worry. We'll explain everything in a brief interaction to each one. So here it's time for Furkan to explain all this and Falco. Thank you for a great introduction. And here are audit talks. System visibility into events in the container and the system give great insight into what an attacker or malicious user is trying to do. We can define our audits as the answer to these questions, such as when did it happen, what happened, where it going, and who initiated it, and so on, which are defined in the Kubernetes documentation very well. Kubernetes audit records the actions and provide an audit trail of users and workloads, which are called the Kubernetes API. Kernel level auditing allows us to monitor system calls, file accesses, and much more things. Eventually, we obtain the information about what's happening in the Kube cluster. Kubernetes audit level events for other end. Every action that we do when we are interacting with the cluster and uh, using kubectl or uh, any other things go through the Kubernetes API server. What Kubernetes audit does is provides chronological set of records that document all the changes to the cluster. And each audit event is actually a JSON object that includes event time, response status, who initiated it, IP addresses, user agents, and you name it, all that kind of information. You can interact before you set up the cluster, or you can access the master node to activate the Kubernetes audit flag, but you have to rest up the Kubernetes API server eventually. And Kubernetes audit has support two backends, one for log backend and another one webhook backend. Webhook backend simply sends events directly to the upstream server, while log backend is stored in the file system. For our case, we are going to use log backend, and you will understand why in the next slides. Okay, what should be recorded? As you can already see a simple policy configuration that has two different rules. Uh, we might listing the pods, for example, doesn't give you any information security, right? Getting a con config map, reading pod status, whether it's ready or not. And this feature actual policy provides you to minimize the variability like changing the log level or eliminating unnecessary logs. Uh, for example, Kubernetes audit logs need not much critical uh, for different kinds of uh, resources. Falco is a runtime security engine. It's an open source security tool for continuous risk and threat detection across Kubernetes, containers, and the cloud. And Falco detects unexpected behavior, configuration changes, instructions, and data theft in real time. Falco also has support for Kubernetes audit and kernel events, and uses and uh, has different methods to collect the data, which is kernel model and eBPF probe. Here is the architecture diagram of Falco. The diagram explains pretty much everything itself. When Falco engine starts, it simply loads the rules. The engine then waits for the events entered by lib escape and lib compromise. Basically, lib escape is responsible for collecting data, while lib is responsible for enriching the data. 
and Folka can co collect system events using the kernel module or eBPF prop. You can only choose one active and also supports Kubernetes ID and all you have to do is enable the web server and send the events to it using Flatbit. In summary, it simply takes the events, matches them with the preloaded rules, and then when the event matches one of the rules, Falco simply sends it to one of the outputs, which is file, gRPC, webhook, and you can also use Falco Sidekick, Falco Client Go, and Falco Exporter. Okay, Falco configuration. We, we managing our Falco using the hand chart and offer a mentioned web server is enabled by default. To change the value, you can use or write this value and, and also it's possible to add new rules or, or write rule files as you can already see here. And these configurations are just tip of the iceberg. By applying the following configuration now, we are ready to scan Kubernetes audit logs. Falco rules. Falco has the ability to extend the rules with the conditions and macros for more flexibility. It also ships many rules by default, and these rules are split by each own context. For example, Postgres, Kubernetes, Elasticsearch, etcd, and you, for example, you can modify consist specific conditions or you can add your custom logic with macros with a changing the rule itself. Okay, here's an example of what the Falco rule looks like. We are using this use case for detecting a privilege container that launches in the cluster. It's a simple logical expression and combined with some conditions. When first time when you deploy Falco with default rules, which covers many aspects for a variety of situations. However, this might cause some noise in your environment. This noise might mislead you if you are at a high scale and throws uh, false, many false positives. Falco provides a way to overwrite the rules. In this example, on the left side, a rule applies for privileged containers but you might have some custom privileged containers and this could fire false positive alerts. In this case, we write two, as two aspects here. The first one is macro where you can define logic here. And this macro requires an allow list for privileged containers. In two steps, we have reduced the false positive situations. Falco was also supports rule exceptions and exceptions are defined as a part of the rule. The file property contains one of the more files that will extract a value from the audit events. The comps property, which is you can uh, use contains equals greater than, less than completion operators and that align with the items in the file property. Each item in the tuple should align one-to-one -one with the corresponding file and completion operator. After we tune the rules by ena enabling the exceptions and for each rule, we finally got rid of a bunch of false positives as you can already see here. Okay, Amin, it's your turn. Thanks, Furkan. So he, he already mentioned uh, about the Kubernetes logs, how we uh, write them into a file. So he already talked about the Falco. So we are collecting logs from the kernel thanks to Falco's, uh, the kernel module, or you can choose the PPF probe. Let's talk about how we collect the logs and how we send our logs to Falco. Flatbit is a general purpose log processor. It also has matrix collection capabilities for embedded Linux systems. You can run uh, Flatbit in any environment, such VM embedded devices, bare metal, uh, for our case, we are going to run in uh, Kubernetes clusters. In our scenario, Flatbit is going to be deployed with, uh, as Demon said, since we want to deploy on each node and we want to collect every uh, collect the every logs in in the node. 
We decided to go uh, with Flatbit over FlatD because it is designed to run high scale with low resources. Uh, and it is one of the efficient solution for containerized environments. Pipeline. Let's see inside of the box. This is the data pipeline, which is called in the documentation. It starts with input. Input collects the data in many different ways. For example, you can use kernel plugin to collect kernel logs. There are other uh, plugins to collect logs. Uh, eventually, you, you'll have uh, a raw data in your hands, but you need to uh, structure that data. So parser comes into play here. You can convert your unstructured data into structured data. For instance, your application has uh, a unique log pattern. You can define that pattern and the parser, uh, and you can apply it to any log. So here we have filter. Filter fixes are one of our challenge here. Uh, filter basically enriches and modifies the log records. Buffer, buffer refers to the ability to store the records in memory or optionally in the file system until your output is delivered. With routing, you can send the data one or multiple destinations, tag and match parameters are critical here. The great part is always at the end. You can send the data to a service or write to a file. This can be implemented as plugins, like you can define Elasticsearch or locate as endpoints. We'll see in the next slides. Configuring Flatbit based on our needs. As you see here, uh, this is how we collect data uh, for uh, Kubernetes API logs, actually. Uh, we use here a tail plugin. Allies and tag we defined here is an internal setting that is used in a later stage by router to decide which build, uh, which output phase it must go through. And it's, it is worth mentioning that we use JSON parser here. You can always find correct values for buffer configuration. In the next slide, uh, you see the filter. Here, the key part is to collect audits from different locations with identity. In addition to the Kubernetes audit event itself, we have all this additional information about where the audit is coming from, like pod name, container name, and you can add another uh, custom label here. If you have millions of Kubernetes clusters, you want to know who produced this log. These variables are set automatically by our CI CD pipeline since we store all the flat bits configuration as a code. Uh, and fortunately, there's a built in pipe named modify plugin that does this job on the collected data. Lastly, after we give identity for each event, now they can be pushed in uh, any remote hosts so that finally we can see the out out events and do thread analy analysis on them. Okay, why flat bit with log backend over Kubernetes backup backend? Uh, you, you might want to ask that, ask that question before you're asking that question, you want to answer. As you can see, log processor is very important, but also it's challenging to configure to make uh, it production ready. By using Flatbit, we are able to modify the event and logs according to our business requirements. Furthermore, we can easily reconfigure our output plugins and start a rollout to the entire cluster by clicking a single button in the pipeline, which is our CI CD pipeline. With Flatbit, we can send out logs to anywhere. In this case, we, sim we are simply sending out all the logs to uh, different remotes. One is Falco, the other one R is uh, the, the other one is our indexing storage. In the next slides, uh, we'll talk about uh, monitoring. It's actually how we increased uh, the visibility and how we enable the observing uh, the performance of the security. Although there are other options around, we'll talk about how we used uh, Loki due to its similarity Prometheus and it has, uh, can easily implement with the Grafana. This is another part actually. It's very co convenient and cost efficient to configure and easily create Grafana panels with it. Okay, log query. 
First, we need to organize the Falco logs. With Loki, we are going to create a log pipeline which is being executing in left to right sequence for each log line. This is how our raw logs looks like in Grafana, in, you, as you see in as you see here in the picture. It is very great to have the logs in JSON format. Uh, it's going to make our job very easy. You'll see it in the demo, and we'll show it in the uh, next slides. Slides. But unfortunately, uh, this op output is not ap uh, applicable for panels for now. However, you can easily uh, filter in the logs here. In the next slide, uh, we are showing how you can organize your logs. In the left-hand side above, you're seeing uh, we are using JSON parser here. So that JSON parser is basically uh, can convert JSON JSON formatted logs uh, and extract the uh, logs labels. So those log labels can be usable in the uh, metric queries. A, a, a little bit below, as you see, the detected field is just detected by Grafana, but uh, you can use it in the Grafana UI, but you cannot use them in the uh, metric query. So uh, let's, Work on let's uh, work on the part uh, log part uh, that is also is in JSON format. The value is also JSON format. As you see here, we're going to use in the middle. We're going to use the line format expression to select a part. Then uh, we'll use the JSON parser again to extract labels. On the right hand side, you see all the labels, and those labels can be usable in the uh, metric query. In the next slides, we'll apply a simple uh, metric query. Uh, log query has its own metric queries that can be applied to log queries. You can create panels based on number of entries per second or number of bytes per second. Here is an example how a metric query and a log query is combined. Count over time shows the number of entries for each log within the given range. With combination of some query, we can uh, count long entries based on anything. As you see here in the example, we are uh, used rules, we use the cluster names. Okay, time, time for Furkan to talk about challenges and some more metrics. Thank you for explaining Flankbit and uh, Glockard for us and changes at high scale. And Actually, everything seems easy in the first place, right? Especially if you're working on high scale, there might be some changes that are worth considering because things might not work as expected for you. Of course, we had various changes in the process, such as eliminating false positives or writing the rules per team, per project, and making this fine-tuned is really time-consuming. And we are generating tremendous amount of audits every second and meantime we need to find a way to build efficient indexing ha backend storage which is highly available and data storage since our data grows every second we also would like to thank our teams to make it a highly available index backends and we are surviving this such a tremendous amount of Datas. What happens in seconds at Trendio? We are monitoring and collecting audits from thousands of workloads. In a normal days, approximately more than 300k audits is being generated each second. That's really huge, right? And for per minute, more than 400k Kubernetes audits events is being generated and 8K of these logs are being scanned by Falco using Fluent Bit plugin. This is just what happens in a second for our Kubernetes clusters at Trendio. Okay, we, we have created some dashboards for to show about overall events. And these dashboards updates in real time and we are able to select time range and this one is specially designed for Falco audits and we group by rule, group by namespace, cluster, cluster image, and you name it. 
We also actively monitoring the users whom gain access to running Kubernetes pods in the production environment. Another utmost importantly, we also uh, monitor the users who read secure objects, for example, secret resource or our custom secret resource objects in Kubernetes that store sensitive data that's used by production services or applications. Here is our weekly report. We also get in weekly digest for every event we are actively watching. This is a sample screen, screen grab for pod exec detection. Okay, let's put all the mindset into demo. I mean, here you go. Thank you for coming. So we'll put the pieces of the puzzle together in here. Before we start the demo, uh, we pre actually we pre-recorded demo for this pre-recorded video. We, we didn't want to take much time with the demo. Uh, to reproduce a similar experience, we created an environment on our workstation with Minikub. Also, we published the, uh, we published the demo on GitHub. As you see, the link uh, in the below. Okay, can you please start the demo? Okay, start into demo. Thank you. So, in the beginning of uh, our demo, we are creating multi node cluster. Above, we have cluster one, and below, we have cluster two. When the cluster gets ready, we'll edit the Kube API servers for getting the loads into the host machine. Okay. Since the uh, Kube API server is a static pod, uh, it will restart itself when we save the changes. When it's done, Let's start collecting the logs with Flatbit. Since we already mentioned the hand values earlier, we'll, we will just look at them quickly here and we will modify the filter to add custom uh, cluster label and install the hand chart. We'll use hand chart here uh, and you will see it. It's very, very easy to install all of them. Okay, next uh, we'll install Falco we basically use the default values here. You don't need to configure much. It's configured itself with the default rules. So, okay, Falco ports are getting up. Uh, last piece of the puzzle is Loki for monitoring. We install it along with Grafana, which it will configure by itself. Uh, since we are using the Loki, uh, Loki stack ham chart here, but we are going to just install it in the one of the cluster. Second cluster will define service and endpoint. This way we'll send the uh, output of our logs to Loki easily. Since we defined uh, our output host as a service name and the port number. Let's access the uh, Grafana. Let's see how logs uh, if the logs are coming, of course they are coming. We already pre-recorded this video. Okay, we are going to just look at the Falco's log, and as you see here, we're getting the first clusters from the first cluster and from the second cluster. We'll we, we're going to organize our logs. As you see here, see here, we don't have much uh, labels for now, but log label has a JSON format, so we're going to. Uh, select that part and apply the JSON parser again, and and end of it will have a bunch of labels. Okay, time to. Aim. As you see here, we have lots of uh, labels here. Now, finally, we're going to use count over time uh, metric query, which is a special metric query for local. Then we'll have a result, but it's going to be messy since every log is unique. So let's use the rule label to combine everything together. So everything makes sense right now. So we, we're changing with the cluster. So we're seeing the number of logs based on cluster. Thank you for coming. Thank you for demo. I get really enjoyed for this. And as you mentioned um, just before the demo, if you want to reproduce the same uh, mindset you you can clone the repository here and we also add a bonus section section just for you and 
we brought some ideas here, such as response engine, policy engine, SOC team, and local alerts. And the idea here by using, by enabling response engine is that you can take actions against very specific events. For example, any container drift caused by kubectl exec, attach, or any other interactive Kubernetes requests inside a Kubernetes cluster. You can find really good examples on the Falcos blog. With the policy engine, you can fine tune the, your system by enabling custom specific policies that will prevent the malicious action detected by the runtime at the very beginning. For example, prevent, preventing the deploying privilege container. And also, you can direct your audit logs to security operations center so they can analyze and monitor and also take an action for the against event all the time. And furthermore, you can also define specific alerts for emergency call. For example, getting a secret or reading a secret in the production services such as pay payment API will be an emergency alert. And the list uh, can go like on this. And thank you for joining and listening to us in this session. Thank you for your time.